Is Blackbeard truly too f hideous to use Boa Hancock's devil fruit? By the way, is it kinda sus that Kobe was completely unaffected by Boa? What if I told you that like law, Boa's fruit holds the key to immortality and preserving people in stone for a long period of time, and Blackbeard wants to use her fruit to bring back the dead. As for law, Doflamingo claimed he would use the Opiopi Nomi so he could seize the sacred treasure of Mary Joyce and take over the world. Today we dive into all these topics as they are all connected in a very mysterious way. We must explore what exactly Exactly, Emu is. Is she a woman? Is he a man? Or is he an ancient weapon? And by the end, you will understand exactly why Doflamingo and Blackbeard plan to use these devil fruits and why immortality is at the heart of this entire theory. So subscribe if you haven't already and let's get straight to it. Let's start with Boa Hanka and her importance after chapter 1059 with the reveal that the prize Blackbeard was seeking was her devil fruit. It's interesting because we know the world government and the celestial dragons go after very special devil fruits, for example Luffy's Nico fruit with who's who. I've never believed that Boa's fruit was this important but she is very special in her character with her backstory being tied to celestial dragons as a former slave and so it's possible that someone as pathetic as like Charlos was forcing Boa to eat the fruit simply for and giggles without even realizing its true importance. Then Blackbeard, he is the devil fruit enthusiast, but what exactly makes it a prize that Blackbeard goes after? Is it an awakening, some kind of useful ability that Bo is hiding from everyone else? When I see the confrontation between Bo and Blackbeard, it seems to me like she's bluffing to Blackbeard's face saying that this power is nothing without my beauty. Kill me and your followers will remain petrified. The next wielder of the fruit cannot undo the spell. Let me know in the comments if you think Boa Hancock is being honest here. If you go with the idea of the potential awakening, the user might be able to access the extended ability. Blackbeard may have realized that even if he did steal her fruit, he would have to train it and maximize it with an awakening, which means that he would be down a few commanders, which is not ideal and not worth it during this chaotic era in One Piece. Whether we want to admit it or not, Boa Hancock just one-shotted multiple Yonko commanders or Titanic captains, a Vice Admiral, Helmeppo, and a bunch of other fodder characters in a very short period of time. Her power mixed in with her extreme combative abilities and the energy of a conqueror is an amazing portrayal for the pirate empress. Because if you think about it, she only met her match here with a Yonko himself, Marshal D. Teach. But you already seen that in the right hands, Boa's Devil Fruit has an insane capability and Blackbeard's interest only skyrockets this since he has the interest for only the top tier fruits. I love how Boa basically told Blackbeard to his face how disgusting, ugly, and gross he is. Even when getting choked out, palm lifted with ease, I've gained so much much respect for Boa in this one scene and it's crazy because we haven't even seen her do anything throughout the entire post time skip and she was one character that I really missed the most since entering the new world. This entire confrontation got me thinking about Boa being inspired by Medusa with her and her sisters sharing the snake theme, even having the name Boa and then turning people into stone. And this also gets my mind thinking about Han Solo, this Dr. Stone X preservation that may be the true potential of Boa Hancock's fruit. The reason I bring this up is because considering the idea that Blackbeard's goal is to become immortal, Wizard of Voice made an entire video on this idea. So I would recommend checking it out after this video and learning more. He mentions how Blackbeard will go after Law and try to kill him and take his devil fruit for his own uses. Immortality looks like something that Blackbeard would seek since he's so afraid of death, unlike Luffy who says you have to be willing to die for your dreams and for those that you care about. Considering that Boa Hancock's fruit could potentially immortalize people in a frozen rock solid state, it makes me wonder if there is a connection here. This also brings up another question like what about all the people that were never unfrozen in the past by Boa's fruit? People that have been turned to statues for centuries. Some possible resurrections could include Rock Jesus Beck who is one of the greatest pirates they ever lived. I could really see Blackbeard trying to bring back rocks especially if he was indeed frozen or immortalized in stone. How about the giant statue of the founders of Mary Joa, the creators, the ancient celestial dragons, but where this would really be a problem is if one of the ancient weapons was a living being being frozen in time. I mean you think the seraphims are a problem, imagine if Pluton or Uranus was a living being frozen in stone while being preserved for the era of Joy Boy to return. I can't tell you exactly what Boa's power could unleash but Oda is setting up something terrifying in the future. With their updated bounty finally being revealed, I like to think that a lot of this comes from her devil fruit and if you think about Law and how pricey his devil fruit was, being around 5 billion according to Doflamingo and that was low 
lowballing it, I do feel like these characters' bounties should be a lot higher. And now I'm not saying that Boa Hancock is as important as Law, but it definitely has some kind of hidden power since the government wanted to get a hold of Law, Boa, and Luffy's fruits. Since Luffy's fruit is Nika with ties to Joy Boy, I wouldn't doubt that these other two fruits had some kind of void century significance. Now before we fully dive into Law, his devil fruit, and that significance with his ties to Emo and the Celestial Dragons, make sure that you like this video to blow it up in the algorithm and get it out to plenty more One Piece fans. It really goes a long way. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell like Luffy and Skypiea to get notifications in the future. Now let's see what's in store for the Surgeon of Death. Going into Law, I think I finally understand why Doflamingo wants his fruit so badly. With the events of chapter 1060, it starts to seem like Emu is actually in control of his own type of ancient weapon. Possibly one different from Poseidon, Uranus, and Pluton completely. A completely different weapon that the world government always held onto since the Void Century era. I've seen the idea that Emu is Uranus or is using the Uranus weapon. This could be true with it looking like a weather weapon of some sort, as we see the sky turn black and beams of energy exploding into the island, wiping it away from history. My only concern and complaint is why didn't they use this type of power before? It would be so easy to wipe out the Oharians this way and other people as well. For example, why did they never target Wano? I would prefer if the three ancient weapons were created specifically to defeat Eam and his weapon of destruction. If you remember, Sanji asked Queen about how a god race with the greatest durability was eradicated from history. And Queen said you have to ask him, but now after seeing the full capabilities of Eam, who are racing Lelouchia from history, after simply writing an X on a map, it makes me fully believe in my speculations that this is how it happened. I just made a video on this topic about the Lunarian Genocide and why it was the first extinguished light that sparked the Great War during the Void Century. Regardless, we know the world government has been seeking to gain control of these powerful weapons with Pluton having an anti-Pluton just in case that the original could fall into the wrong hands. In Water 7, we learned that the world government was intrigued by bringing these weapons into their power to wipe away pirates forever. So when Doflamingo says that he learned of the sacred treasure of Mary Joa and would have been able to seize power of the world if he had lost fruit that specific day, it seems as if Doflamingo saw Eam similar to how Sabo is aware of Emu's existence sitting on the throne. Doflamingo simply knowing of this provides him great leverage. If he has a kill switch set up where information on Emu is exposed if he is ever killed, it could be how he was able to negotiate with their Godosei and to have such a strange and unique relationship with them. After thinking about how Law's Devil Fruit works and his capabilities, Doflamingo was fully in the right to seek it out. First, we have Law's stealth techniques where he could teleport himself through the castle and he could use room to room himself and others into silence so that no one could call out for help if he is spotted, as well as make sure that he is quiet so he's not caught. And the same thing goes with invisibility, because if Law could potentially create an invisible room like a Harry Potter cloak, there's already so much potential here from a stealth perspective. But then at the end of it all, it's implied that the immortality aspect could be used here as well as the body switching technique. Because Doflamingo says it's not only the body switching technique, it's also the immortality surgery is the reason why he would be able to seize the power. So these two powers combined is really what Doflamingo needed to use. With speculation of Emu being immortal and the preserved giant straw hats being kept in a freezer, it's possible that Emu is an immortal being who has been preserved for hundreds of years. Someone who the immortal surgery was used on in the past. This plot point being brought up makes it seem like someone must have had to do it, so who better than Eam the Immortal? Many people believe that Eam was just a female and I think that makes sense if we're talking about the contrast of the legendary Joy Boy or Luffy who will become the Pirate King and then we have Eam the Immortal pulling the strings of the Marines and the Godose. With Joy Boy being a perfect description, a prophetic figure who is childish and goofy, Luffy bringing freedom and smiles to everyone, the Nika power is the most ridiculous power. Someone who is naive and acts like a young joy boy. The opposite would be an immortal woman taking away freedom. Luffy who doesn't think, instead he expresses by screaming at whatever he wants. And Emu seems to be either completely mindless or very, very suspiciously intellectual. Not even shown to ever talk, shown thinking about Vivi while looking at her picture. And while Luffy is a Will of D member representing caring on all the previous generations, even in death, joy boy or Luffy will live on in spirit and 
infinite legacy, another form of immortality if you think about it. Emu has none of this, being locked away from the world, hidden and immortalized in a more literal sense. While Luffy is liberty, freedom, Emu is oppressive and corrupt. I started thinking about this more and more until I realized what if Doflamingo actually wants to use Law's Devil Fruit so he could swap himself with Eam. This truly would allow him to take over the world as he can now manipulate the Kodosei as being known as the king of the world. Not only that, but if he uses the immortal surgery after that, now he is truly an immortal being with the power of Eam. This does rely on the idea that Emu himself is the ancient weapon. And so what kind of makes sense that the Godosei don't want anyone to find out about the pony glyphs or the ancient weapons because it might be the ultimate counter to the person that they are protecting the most. We already saw what Doflamingo would do to dress Rosa. It was a complete dystopia with the cruel reality being hidden underneath and this is exactly what Doflamingo would do if he took over control and sat on the throne. I believe that Shanks also has this knowledge about Emu because he seems to get the same treatment as Doflamingo but speaking of the mysterious red haired Shanks it makes me wonder where was Shanks? No seriously where the f*** was Shanks when Sabo saw Emu? The fact that Shanks scheduled a meeting with the Godosei the exact same day as Sabo invaded the world government is not a coincidence. Why was Sabo about to expose the dragon what he saw in Mary Zouou without mentioning Shanks even once? This means that somehow Shanks wasn't seen there or Sabo and Dragon previously already knew that he was going to be there. I made an entire video before about why Shanks and Dragon are actually working together in an alliance so if you're interested you should really check that out. But no mention of Shanks even though he was at the reverie is definitely alarming but let me know what you think about it in the comments and let me know what you think about this idea of the ancient weapons being an opposing force to emu i think it's perfect for the story it creates stakes it gives the world government a legit reason to why they want to hide the history to why joy boy was a failure in the past and this gets me excited to see shirahoshi and her awakening controlling the sea kings and wrecking havoc on mary Jawa. and now we're getting hints of luffy and the straw hats eventually invading mary Jawa, but zoro had to shut that down right away. I'm hoping Bonnie will tell us what really happened with Sabo and tell Luffy and you never know Bonnie actually might even tell Luffy about Dragon as she might know him since Kuma was very close most likely a former right hand man to Dragon. And with Robin already being both a straw hat and an important figure for the revolutionaries this is all laid out perfectly for us. If Shanks is also involved like I speculate this could be truly a massive alliance with Boa of course being part of this as well as she holds her own personal grudge against the celestial dragons and a loyal love for luffy oh is doing a great job of putting all the pieces together so yeah i'm expecting both law and boa to both come back after being sought after by the world for the devil fruits and joining with luffy dragon shanks and the rest of this massive alliance but if you have any better reasons for the real reason why blackbeard wants boa's devil fruit or the true potential of law's devil fruit let me know in the comments and most importantly what do you think emu is and what is the source of its power Make sure to like the video if you've enjoyed anything that I've said here to help support and grow the channel. Subscribe and hit that notification bell for future videos. And if you want to continue the journey uncovering the endless One Piece mysteries, click on one of these two videos.